So as I said before, today we try to learn how to build a real, an actual ontology. Uh, you already see with Professor Corno uh, some details about what is an ontology, what is a well, what, is our, uh, what are uh, classes, uh, instances, and so on. So we, we briefly recap this, uh, this notion. So OL2 is a knowledge representation language. It represents knowledge and designed to formulate exchange and reason about a specific domain of interest. Um, the basic notion in uh, OL are axiom, entities, and expression. And uh, the result of modeling process that involve this uh, uh, notion, this uh, axiom, entities, and expression is called an ontology. Knowledge uh, consists of elementary pieces that are often referred as statement or proposition. And statement in an ontology are called in a well to axioms. Just to recap, these are the same slide as uh, before. A statement is a consequence of other statement. That means that this statement is true whenever the other statement are and vice versa. And a statement may be consistent or inconsistent, and this is also something that applies to an ontology. An ontology could be consistent or inconsistent. Uh, in the meaning that a consistency is there is a possible state in which all the statements in the set, in an ontology, are jointly true, and otherwise, if there is no, this previous sentence is not verified. Uh, an ontology is formally verified, is formally, uh, is mathematically verified. And an ontology is an explicit description of domain, a domain that uh, when you build an ontology, you need to uh, decide, you need to focus on. And uh, it's composed by four, at least, uh, concepts that are well concept, then properties and attributes of those concepts, constraints on these properties, attributes, and concept, and then individual, often, an ontology as uh, an individual, not always. An ontology defines common vocabulary and a shared understanding of a specific domain. In a, a well to ontology, we have these five uh, objects, you can say, classes, instances, properties, could be object properties, so properties that uh, start and finish, that put in relation different classes and instances, and data type properties that specify a single value, a literal, a number, upon an instances or classes. Restriction upon the, the, the upper element, and annotation. Today we will work with uh, classes, instances, properties, and restriction. We will avoid them in the process of building ontology annotation, just to, to, for time purposes. Tools, there are some tools for building an ontology. Uh, between the editor, we will use Protege, that now is version number five. It is open source, it's free, it's realized by Stanford University from the biology and something group, research group. Then there are other tools like Topoprene Composer or Neon Toolkit and other special purpose apps, for example, for editor for friend, friend of a friend ontologies and using those ontologies. Reasoner that you will see better the next lecture. We will use, uh, the Protege uses Reasoner to verify basically the consistency of an ontology and to infer in some way new knowledge from the, the ontology you, you created. And uh, there are some reasoners, some of them are free, some of them are old, some of them are specific for some subset of a, a well language. And we will use a Hermit that is already installed and integrated inside Protege. So today we will speak about uh, the process that, we, that is called ontology engineering. Ontology engineering is the process of building, maintaining, managing an ontology, one or more ontology. And today we will concentrate upon building an ontology. 
Maintaining an ontology would, be, uh, would mean uh, uh, update an ontology or merge an ontology with another existing ontology or another ontology that you uh, will uh, realize or, and so delete some part of the ontology. So keep the ontology uh, consistent and uh, uh, updated with uh, the, the time, you can say. We will concentrate on building an ontology and building an ontology is to define terms in a specific domain, I will cite the specific domain a lot of time today, and relation terms about a domain and relation among such terms in that specific domain. So building an ontology consists in defining concepts that are now well to our classes in the domain, in the chosen domain, arranging the concept in a hierarchy, subclass, separate class, defining which properties those classes can have and eventually uh, which constraint on their value exist that are the restriction and defining individual that are instances and filling in uh, property values when they are uh, relevant. Since most of you should, uh, could maybe know what is uh, object-oriented modeling, I present here a brief parallel between creating a class in Java or in object-oriented programming and creating an ontology, since often we, we speak here also class. Uh, in a programming language, in object-oriented modeling, a class reflects the structure of the data and the code, while in ontology, an ontology reflects the structure of the world. No matter the, the data or the code that is involved behind or after the ontology. A class is usually, a class in the object oriented modeling, is usually about behavior that the instances of those classes should have, that are the methods of the, of the class, while an ontology is often about structure of concept. Uh, and a class in object-oriented modeling describes the physical representation of the data in terms of uh, integers, string, uh, vectors, and so on. While in ontology, uh, the actual physical representation is not an issue, and you can decide to put this actual representation, physical representation, inside the ontology or to not put uh, this uh, actual physical representation in an ontology. It's up to you. It depends on the domain and on the process that you follow. So why develop uh, an ontology? I, I try to, to write three reasons to why one person with a quite normal uh, psychology aptitude uh, should develop an ontology. We will see only the last, uh, the last one. So developing an ontology is uh, uh, not easy. Is, uh, so the first reason is uh, you hate your life. Uh, because developing ontology is not easy, is often you would take your PC and throw it uh, away out of the window. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's a reason. And then the other reason that you need to fill several days and several weeks with doing something, and because creating an ontology is time consuming, is really time consuming, is much more time consuming than everything probably in your life. Um, maybe having a baby, nine months, would be more or less the same. And then the other reason, that is the one that we, we will see today, is that we develop an ontology for two reasons mainly. One is to share common understanding of the world, of the domain, of the structural information of the domain. This common understanding, we would like to share uh, this understanding with other people that will analyze and use our ontology, or with other software, piece of software that can use our ontology to create uh, some experience, to create, uh, to have uh, some goal. Or, and or, to enable the reuse of specific domain knowledge, to avoid to reinvent the web, and to also introduce standards to allow interoperability between different domains. This, this last part is quite important in, uh, in the semantic web and the ontology engineering, the reuse concept. Uh, because for, for two reasons, because yes, you, you have to avoid to reinvent the web, 
and also because there are some domain in which that you need to approach or you need to use, but you are not a domain expert. expert. So if there is an ontology that well describes that domain, you can use that ontology. So you can uh, build upon the experience of other people on that domain. So you don't need to be an expert of that domain to use an ontology on a specific domain. You can create an ontology on your domain in which you are an expert, but you can also reuse something that other people more competent in that domain of you can uh, are invent or uh, create it. Other reason is to make a domain assumption explicit. So, so that easier to change domain assumption, assumption. For example, in genetics, it's quite often easy to that the domain, some domain assumption change based upon new discover. And also, it's easier to understand and update some data that maybe are leg legacy. And also, an ontology is useful for separating domain knowledge from the operational knowledge. So the, the knowledge, the information that are pertaining on a domain and the knowledge that you use to create a software product to use to inform some people about something in your domain. You can separate this. And also to analyze a specific domain knowledge. You create an, an ontology to better uh, classify, to better structure something in that domain. So the process to creating an ontology is apparently quite linear and it basically consists of seven steps. The first one is determine the scope or the domain. We want to build an ontology for what? In which perspective? And so on. The second step that we, I will present but then today we'll skip in building an ontology is consider reuse of other ontologies that are already existing. The third one is enumerate terms. Then after you have these terms that explicit your domain, you can define classes, define properties, define constraints, and then finally, optionally, create instances. So we will follow this process today. The, these two steps, define classes and define properties are closely intertwined, obviously, because properties often uh, depends upon the classes you, you created before. Yes, we will see this today. However, the process that we will see as linear, in the real world, is much more complex, is much more iterative. So the seventh step could be uh, repeated, reordered, several, several. <coughs> so maybe you determine the scope, then consider the reuse, then enumerate term, then you say, okay, maybe I discover a new term, I will reconsider reuse. Then say, no, 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 I don't want to reuse, and I can define classes. And then after classes, I say, okay, but the domain is too limited now, and I want to reenumerate terms, and then again define classes, then I can define properties, then again, I miss some classes in defining properties that I add classes, add the properties. Then I add some constraint, maybe I can create instances and they say, oh, yes, I miss some classes again. And then I create some classes, their instances. Then maybe at a certain point I say, this is a, a, a mess. I see that ontology, can I consider that for this portion of uh, the domain expression? Maybe it takes a, a portion of the ontology and they put in my ontology. This, uh, create something different, so I need to define new properties to better um, link that ontology with my ontologies. Then it maybe to define other con constraints, create other instances, and so on and so on. It's a third process because the domain that you choose is not immutable, typically. It changes over time. The rest of the world typically do the same thing, change over time. So your ontology uh, Maybe, if you are very, very lucky, you, can, you are able to follow this process, but otherwise it's a mixed process and third process, you never end, hypothetically, you never end to build an ontology. Then there is a stop point, a, a stop condition, but hypothetically you can go on for all your life in building and refining a specific ontology. So, uh, yes, a, a disclaimer, another. 
There is no correct way, does not exist a correct standard way or methodology for building ontology. This, is quite, this method is quite uh, shared, it's quite common, it's quite simple, but there is no correct way. We cannot have a simple metric that told us if an ontology is correct, is built in a correct, in a proper way. We can say that an ontology is consistent, we can say that an ontology presents no error, but we cannot say that this ontology in that domain is perfect, is correct. We cannot. I'm sorry. It's a long, hard and precise activity. It's long because it's iterative, it's hard because it requires um, time, it requires precision to, do, and to build an ontology. You have to be very, very precise because maybe you mis make a mistake and link a property with two classes that are different from the one that you uh, create an ontology and after one month you see something that uh, stopped working for that small error that you, you create. We can have three fundamental rules. The first one is that there is no one correct way to model a domain. There are always viable alternatives. We will see, we will decide one perspective to model a domain now, but it's one way to do it. Uh, maybe also partially incomplete, and it's perfectly okay in developing ontology. Because the best solution depends on the application that you have in mind and the extension that you may be able to anticipate. Okay. The ontology development is necessarily an iterative process and concept in the ontology should be close to object, physical object or logical object, and relationship in your domain of interest, your chosen domain of interest from the perspective you choose. Uh, concepts are most likely to be nouns or objects or verbs for the relationship in sentences that describe your specific domain in the perspective that you choose to uh, explore. So, the first step is determine domain and scope. How we determine a, a domain? Well, determine a domain is quite simple because you decide to build an ontology for doing something. This something is probably your domain. But, so the first question, what is the domain that ontology will cover is probably um, an easy answer. It's easy to answer because you have the site with an ontology for doing something. So this something represents a domain. Then for what we are going to use the ontology? We are speaking about uh, computer networks. But then we are building an ontology on computer networks, every possible computer networks in the world, for doing what? Nothing, because yes, you, you have your life and you have a lot of time to spend, or to doing what? What is the, the application, the purpose of building this ontology? Uh, for what type of question the information in ontology should provide answer? That are, these are called competence competency question, and we will see, uh, we will try to, to create some of them from our domain, uh, that are from which perspective you will approach the domain. And finally, who will use and maintain the ontology in the end? And notice that answer to this question may change during the entire life cycle of an ontology. Maybe after three years, you say that no, we are want to use this ontology for this other application. So we need to refine the ontology uh, or to decide to create another one for that slightly different application of the same domain. The competency question are one way to determine the precise scope of the ontology. The idea is to write down a list of questions that the, your ontology sorry, the, the knowledge base, the application that is built upon your ontology should be able to answer. That is the perspective in which you, the point of view to which you ap approach your domain. This question may also serve later for a preliminary evaluation of the ontology and for stopping ending the process. 
This question must not be exhaustive, just a sketch, some question that try to better understand the domain. So we will try to apply all the process here. I choose a domain that is university, but now we need to, to choose from which perspective, so that to better understand, and what are the competency questions for this domain. So the perspective, the university could be approached, the domain university could be approached for several perspectives. I can consider the structure perspective, the university is an building, there are rooms so that are classroom, there are departments, there are uh, libraries, there are uh, bars and the postal office and, and so on. That is one perspective to define the domain of the university. Another perspective is, for example, the administrative perspective, the role perspective. Uh, yeah, we have a rector, uh, Department, the director of the department, and they have full professor, assistant professor, assistant professor, students, PhD students, and so on. The, and then we can have, for example, the third, a third perspective that is the educational teaching perspective. So, the university is a place in which there are some students and there are some teachers, no matter if they are full professor, external professor, uh, assistant professor, or PhD students or whatever, they teach something that is a course. And uh, <coughs> this course is in, inside a degree in something, and the degree maybe is a uh, bachelor level, master level, PhD level, or, or something like that. And the, the university um, offer such degrees, such courses, and so on. So for, for today, we will explore this perspective, the educational perspective. So the university has something that offer degree, offer courses that involve students and teachers. And so try to, we try to um, build some competency questions that are, I will repeat, I repeat. We would like to create this as, for example, a list of questions that the knowledge base uh, should be able to answer. No? The knowledge base uh, could be something like our uh, didattica.polito.it, so, uh, a website that can query which, which is the offer of any university, any technical university in, in Italy, for example. So we would like to model the Polytechnic of Turin, but also the one of Milan, uh, Bari, and some and, and other uh, universities like this. So engineering and architecture, mainly, degree. So we would like to create something like our teaching portal for the public part, for the list of courses, teacher, how many students, and so on, the number of credits of a course, in that perspective, for uh, this type of university. We don't want to include, for example, physics, literature, philosophy, because we would like to concentrate is uh, something like didattica.poli.it, not Turin, but in general. So let's try to build uh, this, um, some of these questions. So let me open. And for let's try, I mean that uh, now you speak. So the domain is a uh, university. Uh, from the educational, we can say, perspective. Company, com competency. Let's try to build some competence question. I explained to you the domain, so it's an easy step. Uh, the perspective, so let's try to, to formulate some question for this application that I just uh, briefly explained to you. For example, how many professors um, there are for a certain degree program? Then, for example, how many students follow a course?
something more basic. What are the subjects? What are the courses? Course. Yeah. Or the subjects, for example. Okay. Or a uh, which degree a university offer? Also, basic thing. Um, who teaches a specific course? Who is the teacher of that course? What are the working days? Is not. What are the working days? Is it compatible or not? Mm. Like the university. It doesn't really represent the domain mm -hmm. the working days. Okay. Um, what is the schedule of a course? What is the schedule of a course? The schedule timetable. Some, some of these questions that our uh, application should be able to reply, to answer, it's like this. Then we can also continue, for example, uh, I don't know, uh, how many credits uh, a specific degree has, or um, how many courses a specific, uh, which courses a specific degree offers, for example, and so on. So, we can try to sketch some question to better define the domain. In this case, I will I, I define to you the domain a little better, but if you start to say, okay, we would like to, to have a university educational, but from which perspective, which, which, which are the information that my website, in this case, or my application, or my the person that will read the, the, the ontology uh, should uh, learn from this, uh, this ontology. And these are called the competency questions. Yes. The next step is consider use. We would like to have an ontology that is able to reply to those questions in that specific domain. In general, it's always a good idea and is encouraged, you are encouraged to do this in reusing existing ontologies. Why? For, for the reason we, we, saw, we see before, but also to save the effort in building a new ontology or a part of ontology, and also to interact with the tools with the other application, maybe software application, that are already used by these other ontologies and also to employ ontologies that have been already validated through use in other applications. We see before that there is no uh, correct way to, to build an ontology, to have a correct model of an ontology. So if we have an ontology that is widely used, it probably is a good ontology, is correct for that domain. So if we are able to use this ontology, we can benefit from the experience, from the, the Duplication from everything that is around that ontology. Okay. Uh, the question is what to reuse. In, in general, we can split in two, three um, type of ontologies to reuse. There are upper or general ontologies. So general ontologies describe the domain. Uh, we can say the world, a very very general domain, in various way. Mm. For example, a general ontology for the university could represent the university from the educational perspective, but also from the structural perspective, and also for the administrative perspective. All the perspective in one ontology, it's, it's perfect, it's okay to do this. Mm. It is a general ontology, or an upper ontology. An upper ontology typically defines some upper classes, the father, the super classes, and then it not specify 
most, most of the thing under these classes. So it's upper ontology in the sense that you can put your, this ontology upon yours. And these, for example, are three uh, general upper ontology. This is SIC and WordNet are general ontologies. Dolce is, yes, a general ontology again, but typically uses an upper ontology because it defines, um, it's a descriptive ontology, it defines various uh, entity in abstract way, it defines buildings, for example, but also define a uh, person, it defines uh, um, the weather, it defines general concept. So you can start from that and uh, uh, specialize that ontology in your specific domain if you want. Then we have domain-specific ontology, that are ontology that cover very well, typically, a specific domain. For example, Go is an ontology for describing the gene, biology. Uh, the Gaunt is an ontology made here, just self-advertise, um, to, to handle uh, home automation and building automation uh, properties and devices and structure. So everything that is around home automation and building automation. Moore is an ontology to de define um, a unit of measurement, every unit of measurement in the world, standard and not standards. Okay. So if you need to uh, express something in your ontology in a, a unit of measure, you can use the Moore ontology that define every possible in the world unit of measure for almost everything, for water, to electricity, to whatever. They are really specific, or really linked to a domain. Another in certain sense uh, domain specific is, for example, for a friend of a friend, that is usually the very recent here. Yeah. Uh, it's an um, ontology for describing the relationship between people and people itself. These are a domain specific because it, it express a specific domain. So today we will skip this part for, for our example, but also for your exercise. We, we imagine that you don't have any ontology to use, just to keep things simple. So next step, we don't reuse anything, we decided, so good. Uh, third step, enumerate important terms. We have a domain, we have a perspective, we have some question. Now we have to write down a list of all terms that would like to make a statement about or explain something to a user. So this term, try to reply this question. What are the terms we need to talk about in our ontology? What are the properties of those terms? What would like to say about this term? In the first step, it's important to get a comprehensive list of this term that pertain to the university from the educational point of view domain without worrying about overlapping between concept, relation, overlapping between concept, between concept and relation, between relation and relation, properties, hierarchy, and so on. Terms. No matter. Most terms, a lot of terms, the more, the most the better. So let's try to terms, define some terms. Then maybe we don't use all of these terms in the first version of ontology, but we need to define. So for example, one term is university. I will keep it simple. Another term, for example, Aulas. rooms. rooms. Mm. No. We want to describe what is the offer a university. Ah, offer. So it doesn't reply any of our competency question. So mm. no, maybe course. course. Yeah. Then degree. Degree. Schedule. Schedule. Yes. Professor that are teachers. So that. Then. Uh, question. You use question. the term teacher, but we use the professor in the question. No, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Teacher, professor. I, I will use teacher. Um, it's not the terms derived from the questions, right? Yeah, oh. absolutely. 
I, I, will use, I will prefer in this occasion teacher because professor is also used from another perspective of university, that full professor, associate professor, assistant professor. So in, teacher is more general, so someone who teaches. So it's, it, it can pass effective professor, but also includes a PhD student that teach in the lab or external person that teach a course in university. So it's more inclusive. Just, just a, a, to choose something different. But the professor could be okay. Student? Perfect. Program? Degree program. Degree program? Uh, what's the difference between with degree? Degree is a degree. It's like an object. But degree program contains something about the degree. Uh, the program is different than degree. No? Exemplify. Okay. <laughs> uh, master degree. Uh, okay, so the degree we can say type, level, okay, and degree program. Okay. I agree. And then um, the, the fact that, uh, for example, a teacher teaches, it's a term, and that uh, a university offers a degree, it's not a term, but offers. A university offers a degree, a degree offers a course. So we can see this from different uh, terms, not only classes, we can say, also terms. And what else? Well, one or two. Credits, course credits, course hours, maybe they are relevant because we ask, uh, um, for example, here, we don't ask, okay, but we could ask uh, how many hours a course uh, last, how many credits a students have for following this course, it's, it's okay for our domain. And enrolled, no? Enrolled. enrolled, perfect, perfect. A student is enrolled or not in a course? Yeah. Then we, we can also continue. The all terms, not only the object, but also the verb, we can say, and uh, uh, the, I don't know, the, the person name or the person ID. That the student is 17321. That's a, it's, it's ID for the university, and a teacher maybe it has a similar ID, and so on. Hmm? Okay, a list of terms, long as you want. And then we can take this term and try to uh, use most of them in uh, building classes, relationship, and properties, constraints, and whatever. So, first of all, uh, domain, competency question, reuse important terms, mm, a comprehensive list, the longer the better. We will shorten the process here, just to, 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 to arrive uh, quickly uh, to a solution. Then we can start building effectively an ontology. Mm, and we start from classes in the hierarchy. Remind that a class is a concept in a domain and not the word that denotes a concept. That is, you can call a class uh, degree and tomorrow you can, you can decide to rename in degree program. And it's, it's okay because the class is always the same. It's the concept is the same. We want to specify the degree program yesterday and tomorrow. You should only choose to be more specific tomorrow and less specific yesterday. But if you, the concept is always the same, that you want to specify the degree program, it's mostly irrelevant how do you name the classes. It has obviously practical uh, consequences when you wish to, for example, build a software that. Uh, ask for some concept from one day to another 
name, name change, but a class is a concept by default. So not the word that you attach to that concept. And a class is also a collection of elements with similar properties. Okay? While instances of classes are specific named elements that pertain to that collection. To be an example, wine, it's a class. Red wine is a class or an instance? It's a class. Barolo is an instance because it's a specific uh, red, I suppose, wine. Okay. Classes usually constitute a taxonomy hierarchy. So a superclass, subclass hierarchy. As a class hierarchy is always is a is a hierarchy. So every sub, sub, subclass is a instances of the superclass. It's the same, they are strictly related. Wine, red wine, the red wine is a type of wine. Okay. Uh, in creating this uh, ontology, there are at least three modes of development. None of them is better than the other. Uh, the first one is top down, so you can start to define the most general concept, the high level classes, and then try to specialize them. Or the bottom up, define the most specific concept and then create the super classes for them. Or a combination of the two, two models. Uh, it's at, at, up to you, as you like. There is no one approach better than the other. So let's start to define our ontology. Let me open Protege. You, you already see Protege with Professor Paul. So we work in the Entities tab right now, since we need to define the new classes. So starting from the terms, starting from the terms, we can start to decide some classes. For example, University could be a class, Course could be a class, Mm. Degree, type, level, program could be one two class. Student and teacher could be a two class, two classes, for example. So let's start to, to build uh, some of them. Start from from the simple one. So we can create the university. And then we can create the, the, the students and the, yeah, not here. The students and the teacher classes. Then we can create also the degree program class and Yes, not here. And uh, the um, course plus. That are most of the terms that we, we define, we can imagine that are concepts and classes. Then, uh, notice two things. One is uh, that uh, all these classes are singular. This is a choice. But you, you have to, cho to, to choose. The concept uh, are singular or the concepts are plural and then uh, follow the same uh, structure for, for all the ontology. So I choose that the ontology, the classes are all singular, but it could be uh, right courses, degree programs, teachers, students, universities, all plural. It's okay, but you have to choose not to mix this up. 
The second thing is that uh, every classes at each level, every classes at this level, should represent the same level of abstraction from the concept. So university is a general university, and it's okay. Course is a general course. I cannot imagine something higher, more abstract than course as a term, as a concept. A degree program, yes, I cannot, it's difficult to imagine something more general than a degree program. A teacher and students present the problem. Because yes, I can imagine something that uh, Mix together teacher and student. That is people, people, the singular person. So it's a good idea if I create here a person, a person class, and I put together in inside as uh, ch children, uh, students, and teacher. It's also important because maybe student and teacher. As some proper may have some properties in common, for example, the name of the person or the ID of the person, so that I can assign person with the name, and uh, you know, automatically also student and teacher will have the property name. If we have different classes, we need to specify the same properties for both of them. In this case, it's in inherit from the father, um, and then. Uh, I would like to integrate degree types inside degree program uh, by choice. In the sense that inside degree program, degree program could be of three types: bachelor, master, and, and PhD level. Degree program could be of one of these three. And these three classes are disjoint, in my opinion. No? Yes. Disjoint means that uh, an instance is of bachelor cannot be an instance of a master. Which is not really correct in this university, because <laughs> being because a bachelor you can start a master degree, I think. Yeah, but you, it's, you, are, you become a, a virtual, uh, we can say, ah, okay. you, you start the master degree. Okay. But okay. it's the student that is out enrolled for a moment in oh. the bachelor and the master. master. Yeah, this, but the, the master and the bachelor, have separate courses, separate programs. Mm. Uh, bachelor degree in computer engineering is surely different from a master degree inside a single university, at least of in the same computer engineering. But these classes are separate. Then you can follow, can be enrolled in a bachelor degree in uh, I don't know mathematics and in a master degree in mechanical engineering. It's, it's perfect as a student. Okay, so we can create uh, these three classes. The, we can say bachelor, master, and doctorate, just to use the long term. And this class, uh, I, want, I would like to make this disjoint. Okay. So we have this doctorate, okay, you see here, is a subclass of degree program, it, it's perfect, and it's disjoint with the other two. Doctorate is disjoint with master and bachelor, bachelor, uh, master is disjoint with bachelor and doctorate, and uh, similarly you see that bachelor is disjoint with master and doctorate. Each class is disjoint with any other. So, I will say that we can stop here for the classes, it represents quite well our uh, idea. Okay, I have a student, I have a teacher. Uh, the student may follow some courses, may be enrolled in some degree. The university offers courses and degree. So from the classes, it's more or less done. So next step in our process is define properties. So properties, just to remind, is at, uh, are attributes of instances of the class and relation to other instances. We can have, uh, generically, three types of uh, properties. Intrinsic properties, like the color of an object. Extrinsic project, like the price of an object. Things that can change uh, independently from the object. And the relation of other instances, like who is the manufacturer of an object. 
It's a relation between the, the object and the manufacturer. Uh, properties could be, you can say, simple and complex. Uh, we call it data properties and object properties. Simple properties or data properties contains primitive values like string and numbers. The person name is a string. Uh, the number of credit of the course is six. Or complex properties that are the object properties that contain or point to other objects like who is the manufacturer of an object, is an object property that link the object and his manufacturer. That are two separate instances, in two separate classes. So, let's start defining some properties, let's start from the object properties between our classes. So here in our terms we wrote something, like Teaches could be an uh, object properties. Yes, no. Maybe. Yes. Offers. Mm -hmm. uh, credits could be uh, object properties. <laughs> no. Uh, data properties. Course hour could be an object of data properties. A uh, data property. Enrolled. Object. Right? Because a student is enrolled in the process. Uh, person ID, person name, yeah. and data properties. So start from we can start from here from these properties. So uh, we can create the or start, we can start from university and degree program. The university offer degree program. So we can call offer degree because I imagine that at a certain point we have a degree that offers some courses. So let's separate these offers. So offers degree. We can also fill up some of these property, or these uh, yes, properties of the data properties, like for example, the domain and the range. So the domain of offer degree is university. And the range is uh, the university offer degree, so the range is uh, degree programs, bachelor, doctor, or master. What do you choose? Degree program, why? Because it's the most general class, yeah, absolutely. Uh, then we can also say, um, so university degree, then degree courses, we can create the, the equivalent that is uh, of first course. And so the domain of a course is a degree program. And the range is the course. So, university offer a degree, some degree. Each degree may offer, should offer at least one course, we can say, because otherwise it makes no sense to have a degree with no courses. Then we have uh, the, the person part, so in particular the teacher and the students. So we can have, uh, starting from our list of terms, that uh, the teacher teach, uh, teaches uh, courses, and the students uh, uh, is a role to follow a course. And so we can create this one, this two, uh, teaches. And uh, follows. And we can set up a domain and range for these two properties. So teaches. Um, the domain of teaches is uh, teacher and uh, the range is uh, yeah. uh, we can do the same for follows the domain is students student and the range is uh,
then we can have another property uh, yes, another object property that maybe is that uh, uh, enrolled in a student is enrolled in a degree follow a course and is enrolled in a degree so the domain is uh, um, student and the range is the degree program then if we want we can also create uh, the, the inverse of these, uh, these properties so we say that a student is enrolled in a degree program we can also say that uh, a degree program has students enrolled or that uh, a course uh, a teacher teaches a course but also that a course is taught by a teacher we can create also the, the reverse uh, uh, object property we can create a few of them for example we can create the is taught and uh, is followed by And instead, in this case, they are the inverse. This is the inverse of teaches as is followed, this is teaches of it's the inverse of follow. So instead of the explicitly define the domain in the range, we can also we can basically say that this is the inverse of uh, uh, teaches, and uh, is followed is the inverse of follows. In this way, since we define domain range on the other two properties, we automatically have the domain range in these two object properties. If we, okay. if we run the reasoner from the reasoner uh, menu and say start the reasoner or synchronize the reasoner, it depends, uh, it will add this information, this inverse property because it inferred that since this is a, an inverse property inject the domain and the range from the other properties and add both of them in the right place here and the right place is that the old range is now the domain and the old domain is now the range in fact follows as, as domain students follow the course and the inverse as correctly as domain the course because the course is followed by a student. So the reasoner, uh, that I, I repeat, you will see uh, better the next uh, time with Professor Corno, uh, try to add this information that are already present in the ontology, but maybe in another place, and try to validate something about your ontology. So we create this object property, we can stop here for the object property, we can also create, uh, if, you if you want, the, the inverse of our course or for degree, maybe also other object property, but just to, to have an idea, we can stop here, these are, we can say, the essential properties, and we can move to the data properties. The data properties, uh, we say that we want a person name, data property, If we want uh, to define uh, a domain ranges also for this, so the person name uh, applied to person, and the range is uh, is a literal. I will choose the plain literal. After we show you why. And okay, so that person name, and then we can have uh, course credits. Course credits, domain, uh, course, range, uh, integer, or int, uh, course hour. Same as before, domain, course, and range, integer. We cannot uh, merge them. 
because they kept saying merge and merge into they represent different information yes but the domain and the range is the same domain and range is the same uh, yes we cannot merge into something no mm. like we did with student and teacher hierarchy so that both of them have the same uh, yes uh, yes we can create a uh, course properties that has uh, as a subclasses uh, okay. uh, yes, course hour course because if I have hundred yeah we can merge in a more generic class that uh, has the same domain, the same ranges, but obviously then we need to define um, for each of them. Yeah, for each of them in, in the instances we need to define the course hour and the course credit and not the course description because it's too general. And because the, the value inside hour and credits it's different. It's related. Now we, here we have the 10 hour for each credits here. But so the 10 credit course is a 100 hour course. Uh, but for another university is not uh, the same uh, value but they are related in some way yes yeah, so we can also uh, create a uh, super class from both of them um, and then we can also have a course name that has as domain uh, course as uh, ranges uh, like before uh, a literal If we want, if we have a course description, we can also put this course name in the superclass course description, but we need to remove the range from the superclass because here the range is literal, not more integer, but the domain is always the same. So we can define the domain in the superclass in the super, uh, in the super data property uh, and the range in each uh, child, we can say. Um, then, uh, we can have, uh, for example, person name, the degree name that the domain is a degree program and the range is, uh, again, literal and uh, the university name, why not? University name uh, again domain university range literal and then uh, what else yeah we can have just to, to change uh, data type from literal and numbers uh, for example a faculty uh, data property that is, a teacher is a faculty of the university or is a PhD student, is an external, is something else. And we want, maybe we don't want to have the precise detail of uh, what type of faculty he is, but we want maybe to have a yes, no reply. It's a faculty, yes, it's, not, it's a faculty, no. It's an external PhD student, we I don't care, it's an external person. So it's not a faculty. So we can, for example, define that the domain of faculty is teacher because a person is too general for a person, is too general for a, it's wrong for students. Only a teacher could be a faculty. In the other case, the reply is no. And the range, we can choose, for example, a Boolean that there is here somewhere. So, it's, it's, a, it's a, a faculty, yes, no, true, false. Okay, so we set up object properties, data properties. We can run the reasoner just to check that we don't have something strange. No. For example, yesterday when I tried, I set the wrong domain, for example, here. I do this something like this and nothing changed okay now I don't remember um, it shows some error no it does show some any error in this case it's showing any error I don't know where he is 
Uh, but, uh, for example, uh, course students, if you put the same domain for course and uh, degree program, uh, probably you see that the degree program is a course. It infer that the degree program is a course and the course is a degree program mm -hmm. as classes. In this case, uh, it does not show any, any error, any strange thing more than error. The, the range is a uh, course. Then, then, then we will try to have um, the students follow, of course. Some error warning from the, the reason that uh, after. Uh, yeah. Let me save this one. Then, so we define properties. So we can define some constraint. We, we already defined some constraint in defining properties. Uh, for example, the name of an object is a string. We already said the person name is a string. So we start defining some constraint. We can also say that, uh, uh, for example, a university has exactly one location, or has exactly one name, for example, if you want or that the course has exactly one number of credits. You cannot have three property course credits because the course has only one uh, type of credit, number of credits. Um, uh, for constraint, we may refer, obviously, to property restriction like cardinality that we don't set, domain range that we, we already set for both object and data properties. Uh, remember that, uh, as we already see, a subclass inherits all the property from the superclass. So the property name from in person is inherited from, uh, to the is a child. And if a class has multiple superclasses, it inherits properties from all of them. And a subclass can override the restriction to the from the superclass to narrow the list of a value. So a subclass can make the cardinality range smaller than the superclass or replace a class in the range or in the, in the range uh, of a superclass. Super then we, we will add some, uh, now some constraint. The last step is to create an ins instances and we will create some instances. And basically, define an individual create instances required to choose the desired class, create the instances, and fill event, uh, optionally uh, property values. If they are present, fill the property values. Some ontologies may not have any instances because they want to describe a knowledge but don't want to describe any specific object in the knowledge. And in most cases, we will create some instances, just to, to simplify. And in most cases, classes and instances are maintained in two separate or well defined. Why? Why? Because in, the, in one ontology, you store the classes, the knowledge representation. And then, in, in some cases, you need to have different instances of that classes. So you create separate instances ontology that store only the instances. So you have an ontology with all classes, and then you create a new ontology that imports the previous one and define the instances that you need in that case. Then you need other instances, you create another ontology that imports the class ontology, we can say, and create other instances, and so on. So that you can have a domain representation that is independent from the specific application that you are using. For us, in, in other cases, Instead, instances are present in the same ontology, in the Mu ontology, the one for unit of measurement. The Mu ontology has some instances inside. If you use that, you have to create some instances in your ontologies for defining unit of measure, a value of unit of measure. And in this case, we will create some instances inside ontology, for example, to just for, for time purposes. So this is, this will end the, process. Um, yeah, before this, we'll complete the ontology. So, 
we can add some restriction to the classes, to the object property and data property. We already had some the domain and the range. Um, we can add some. We can add some restriction. For example, we can say, let's think about a university. A university in our representation is a university if offer some degree program. If it doesn't offer any degree program in our representation, it's a useless university. It's only walls and seats and doors. So we can add a restriction that in Protege are put in a subclass of. We can create, for example, a, an object restriction because the offer degree is an object properties. So we can say that university offer degree some degree program. We can say that we want to add a restriction that that classes should have, the instances of that classes should have an object properties that yields the offer degree properties and this uh, property should exist in the instances. So a good instance is an instance that has declared these uh, properties. And that the range of the, the property in the uh, instance is degree program or a subclass of it. This, is, this last part is already enforced by the range of the property itself. But here we specify another type. We can also say that it's one thing, because it's the range that will define the, the, the degree program uh, class. But here it's, it's more precise. So one, a person that read this uh, say, OK, this, the instances of the class should have offer degree, the offer degree properties, and the offer degree properties should have as a range degree program without reading the actual uh, representation of the object properties immediately as this one. Maybe we, here, we, we can also say that offer degree some uh, bachelor program, if you want to better specify. So this, it's a subclass for the range, but it's a better sp a specification uh, of, the, of the property. Here, we, we can remain general. Then we can move on the degree program. The same degree program should offer at least one course. Otherwise, it's again useless. So we can say that uh, uh, similarly, as an object restriction, offer course some courses. Uh, some is, uh, as you see, last, this is last time, an existential uh, operator. Uh, let's say that should exist at least one of them. So it's equivalent, we can say, to say exist minimum one. So we can use some or minimum one independent uh, in, in, in both cases. Then what do we have? Um, students. Students, uh, we can say that similarly should follow some courses. Uh, yeah. And we can say something more specific for teacher. We say that teacher uh, should teach some courses. But we can also say that a teacher, for example, cannot teach more than 10, 100, I don't know, courses. Because in, it's, uh, it's required to teach maximum that number of course. So for uh, simplicity, I will put here max one, just to, to try that it will work for real. But in reality, it could be something like uh, 10, 110, like 10, 15 courses. A teacher cannot teach more than a certain number of courses. And for us, in this example, this certain number is one. 
because we like it. Then we can also have some restriction on the data properties. For example, the person uh, should have the person name exactly one person name. You cannot have more than one name plus a name. The sorry, the you could use the string instead of. I could use string or literal. It's more general than plain literal. But now I will show you why I use uh, after. In the instances, I will show you why I choose a uh, plain literal. It's more or less the same. And uh, for example, we can say that the course should have uh, exactly one uh, course hour. and exactly one uh, course credit. Uh, if I say that uh, the data property uh, course hours, for example, is functional, it's the same? It's the same in respect to? To the same that uh, a course should have exactly one in general, yes. In this specific case, uh, we are seeing two things differently. Because in that one, it's a property, in that, that case, it's a property that uh, works for every, we can say, instances of a course hour. Here, I'm saying that in the course class, the course hour must be exactly one. Now, now it's, uh, it's a bad example, but I can put the course hour here, in the degree program and say that here it will be exactly two because yeah I have like to in, in your but, but, say, then, uh, but then the domain of course hours yeah no, okay yes imagine that you have another okay. uh, more uh, large domain or no domain at all etc a property the difference is, is that in the functional case you apply that uh, property to, to the entire every use of that object prop or the data property of that object prop in this case, you say that in this specific class, you would like to realize this. Maybe in another class, you want to realize something totally different. It's more, it's, it's a little bit, you say, in this case, it's equivalent. In this specific case, it's always equivalent. Um, yes. Stop, you can say. Follow some, ah, yes. And the students is also enrolled as an object uh, property is in uh, some degree program. Okay. So we can, again, synchronize the reasoner, just to say if there is something uh, strange that happened visually, apparently no. So we can create some instances here. So for example, we can start, start from university. We can create the Politecnico di Torino. This name, Politecnico Torino, is a name, we can say, for you. It's not a name that is useful for the ontology. You can also call it one, two, three, four, or instances one. It's more it's useful if you use a name that uh, allows you to recognize immediately what is that instance is about. Mm -hmm. And that instances should have, uh, for example, we say that the university should have, uh, should offer degree and uh, we can add, uh, should have a university name, exactly one that is a plain literal. Maybe not exactly one, sorry. Some. Uh, individual. Politecnico di Torino, so we can add the name of the university. And we can say that is Politecnico di Torino. And we then so can select the plain literal and we can set up the language. Mm -hmm. 
you say that university name, it's a literal, it's in Italian called the Politecnico of Torino. If we want to add the Spanish name, we can. The English name, we can. And it is why I set some uh, university name, not exactly one, because I want to move on different languages. Uh, while, for example, on the person, I say that the person name is exactly one, because typically the person name doesn't change with the language, uh, and so on. So the Politecnico di Torino should offer some degree program. We can, for example, create a doctorate. Um, we can call it PhD uh, Computer Engineering. And this uh, um, then we can check that the degree program should offer some courses and the university should offer some degree. So we can go back to the individual, say the Politecnico di Torino now is able to offer degree that is called PhD computer engineering. And then we can create, for example, the semantic web course. And we could say that the PhD in computer engineering instance uh, offers course semantic web. Uh, having the name of the instance and also the name for the instance is not a redundancy or? No, because this name is, it could be also instances number one. Um, okay. So it's, it's for you. Mm -hmm. When you see all the instances, you say, okay, this is the computer engineering PhD in Turin. Mm -hmm. It's not the computer engineering PhD in Milan. It's not the computer engineering master degree. It's for you, for, for improve your reading of the methodology. Otherwise, you have to open all of that to say, okay, so this is the, the name is uh, the university is uh, open all the instances to look for the, the instances that you uh, are looking for. Otherwise, um, yeah, um, and then we can also create, uh, okay, say a teacher again, any name here because the important is. Uh, eventual person name and other properties on the teacher that are that can teach is maximum one course for example so he teaches semantic And then we can create also students, just to complete all the instances. We can put myself as a student. The students uh, follow the semantic web course. If we run the reasoner, we see that apparently there are no Errors, no problem, we can say more than error. Uh, we can notice, you should notice one thing. For example, that in students, we say that students should be enrolled in some degree program, and should follow some courses, and should, and should have the person name that is exactly one, the students. Then, have a look, we can have a look at the students. And I don't put the person name, and I don't put the uh, enrolled in property, and the reasoner don't uh, ask for anything. They say it's perfect, it's okay. Why? The reasoner don't uh, enforce the application of exactly one person name, for example. Or the fact that here should be present uh, enrolled in a property, as I define in the class. No, you cannot. <laughs> you 
it's more philosophical. There is no must. The, I, I don't, I always not use must, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it sh I should have to use must. Because here, what, what this property is saying is that any instance of students must have a data property that is called person name, and this data property must have one. In plain literal. Must. Should be must. But it's, we can say, from a theoretical point of view, it's wrong if I don't put a person name and uh, enrolled in. I should put, I must put that. But the reasoner that not, uh, does not say, hey, you forgot to put this. Why does it not say this one, this thing? Because, you can say that. For the open world assumption. A reasoner cannot know if in the world any other ontology defined for that instances that properties. So for the sum, minimum, uh, and exactly and for every property, if the property is absent, the reasoner don't say anything. For the sum and minimum, even if it's present, the the, the reasoner don't say anything. For the maximum, if you go over the maximum, the reasoner say no. So we can try, for example, we can add, uh, uh, we can take the teacher, for example, and we can add uh, another person name. If we run the reasoner, it say inconsistent ontology. It give you, we can say, an error. Because, because person name must be exactly one. Uh, we put two person name. Then we can, I can also click on explain and I think about it. And then it give you a totally useless explanation. This is okay. It try to explain you why he infer that the person name is wrong is given error and he say in this way person name exactly one and it show you that you have a person name Fulvio Corno and a person name uh, FFS blah, 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 and so on so you have to, to understand that this exactly one is not uh, it, it has problem with this two person name applied and here it become everything it become uh, so if I remove person name and run again the reasoner, it removes the red part and it becomes again consistent. Okay, so uh, the same things happen with object property, obviously. And also the reasoner is useful in this way. For example, if I create uh, an instance that I called uh, should be a university, And I say that this is, so, is a, an instance of thing, but then I add some, the, data, the object properties that are typical for, for the, the university class, like offer degree, uh, PhD, the only one. And other, like the university name, for example, We put this instance here in thing, and under university, we see only Politecnico di Torino. Then, if we run the reasoner, he say that it says that should be university. It say, oh, should be university. It probably is a type of university because you define object properties and data properties that are specifically of that classes and that has as domain the university class. So, if we have a look to the infrared instances under university. Now we see the Politecnico di Torino, that is the, universe, the, the instance that I created, and there should be university, that is the general instance that I put on their thing. So the reason I add this information and infer this additional information that is present 
in the ontology, in the domain of the object properties in the class definition, and attach this information to a generic instance. Okay, so the, the reason uh, that again you will see better next time, uh, try to add this information that already exists inside the, the, the ontology to the, uh, to the knowledge present in the ontology, already present in the ontology. Okay, uh, briefly, because I was going too long, common problems. Uh, remember that in an ontology we have a multiple inheritance so that a class can have more than one superclass and this class inherits every properties and restriction from all the parents. Um, class disjoint are disjoint if they cannot have common instances and disjoint classes cannot have any common subclasses either. Uh, avoid class cycle. Hmm? This is a danger of multiple inheritance that are cycle, the class hierarchy. So if a class A has a subclass B, and at the same time B is also a superclass of A, or more long cycle, these classes and all their instances are equivalent. And in semantic web slash ontologies, equivalent means they are the same identical thing. The same thing. It's a strong equivalence. So it could be a problem to, to be avoided. Uh, this, I, I said this before, uh, sibling in the hierarchy must be at the same level of abstraction generality, like section and subsection of a book, if you think about it. Um, then, how many classes, how many classes too many, and how few classes are too few? There are two rule of thumbs uh, that say that if a class has only one direct subclass, could be a uh, could be present a modeling problem. You are approaching the modeling problem in a wrong way. Or the ontology is not yet complete, because you decide not to complete, for example. And the other rules say that if there are more than a dozen subclasses for a given class, then maybe it's needed to add some intermediate uh, classes to better classify these, uh, um, these dozen of subclasses. This is our rule of thumb. In some cases, you have more than, for example, dozen subclasses for some taxonomies and so on, because the world is so populated and so unique. But as a general direction, one class with only one direct subclass could be a problem, could be present a problem on modeling of the ontologies. Otherwise, more than dozen could be necessary to better split, to better categorize these classes. As I said before, Single or plural, it's up to you, but you have two choices, singular classes or plural classes. Stick, choose one and stick to them. Um, and as we said before, a domain for domain and range, when defining it, when defining them, find the most general classes or classes that implements the domain of that range. Um, about the scope, an ontology should not contain all the possible information about the domain. We stop at a certain point, we add only a perspective, and there is no need to specialize or generalize more than the specific application built upon your ontology required. Um, so there is no need to include all the possible property of a class, only the most useful and salient for you and for your application. So this ends the first part of the, the lecture. Now we can have 10 minutes of uh, interval, and then I will give you the last uh, exercise that is uh, valuable for the exam to do in Protégé, that is uh, building an ontology, starting from your famous uh, questionnaire of the start of the beginning of the course.